The red flare is an internationally recognised signal of distress. In an emergency, a correctly deployed flare can save your life. Distress flares and signals have two distinct purposes to both raise the alarm and to pinpoint the precise location of the vessel in distress. Even in the age of long-range satellite communications, the comparatively primitive pyrotechnic remains an essential part of any waterborne craft's safety equipment. Anyone who sees a distress flare or smoke signal must assume that someone is in grave danger and that immediate assistance is required. Ships may be diverted, lifeboats launched, as well as search and rescue aircraft scrambled. You must therefore never deploy a distress flare unless you are in grave and imminent danger. If you deploy a distress flare and subsequently resolve the emergency yourself, you must inform the Coast Guard at the earliest opportunity so that rescue services can be stood down. Similarly, if you need assistance but are not in immediate danger, you should consider alternative means to raise the alarm. There are a variety of flares commonly available, and whilst they all perform a similar function, there are subtle variations both in the method of deployment and operation. The choice of flare will depend upon the location of the vessel and distance from relative safety, and prevailing conditions such as visibility and weather. It is therefore not uncommon to have a selection of different flares and signals available. International conventions, the SOLAS regulations for example, may specify a precise flare inventory and any recommendations made here serve merely as a guide to the minimum requirements. As a rule of thumb, the further you are from help, the more powerful are the flares required. Location is relative to the shore or a point of comparable safety and can be divided into three categories. Inshore is defined as up to three miles from the coast, assuming that the viewer is at sea level. This is the approximate distance to the visible horizon on a clear day. Coastal, up to seven miles from the coast, a pyrotechnic would need to be projected beyond 10 metres in height to be visible from the beach. Offshore is defined as beyond 7 miles from the coast and potentially beyond the visible horizon. A flare projected up to a height of 30 metres or 100 feet should be visible from over 10 miles away on a clear day. Day or night, wind, cloud base and location will all influence the choice of flare. As already established, the purpose of the distress flare or signal is to both raise the alarm and to pinpoint the location of the stricken vessel or life raft. Raising the alarm calls for a long range signal whereas pinpointing calls for a signal which burns or discharges at the exact location of the emergency. Close inshore, a handheld signal will adequately perform both tasks. Further offshore, separate flares are necessary. A red handheld or pinpoint flare is intended for use within three miles of land or relative safety a nearby vessel or offshore installation, for example, and in conditions of poor visibility, high winds or darkness. These flares burn with an intense bright red light for a minimum of one minute, and over short distances are effective at both raising the alarm and pinpointing the position of the emergency. Many flares utilise a simple ring pull system while some operate by pulling the knurled handle to override the safety mechanism and aligning the two witness marks or arrows by rotating clockwise. Hold outboard and point downwind, keeping hands clear of the flare tip. 
Strike the handle sharply using the palm of the hand or any suitable hard surface. Ensure that the hot flare is kept away from the face and body and clear of any flammable surfaces, even after discharge. Because of weight considerations, aircraft life rafts carry compact projectile flares. These usually have an independent trigger mechanism and whilst capable of repeated deployment, their signal is short-lived, around 7 seconds.